Welcome everyone. Uh, on behalf of Indo-Caribbean Society and Texel American University, located in Thank you very much. South America, I'd like to welcome Dr. B. M. Hegde. Uh, Dr. B. M. Hegde needs no introduction. He is a well-known personality globally. Uh, but to complete the formality, I would mention few of the endless list of achievements. Uh, throughout his illustrious career and a brilliant scholastic record. I was fortunate to have met him a couple of times uh, while I was doing my residency in uh, Manipal. And I believe he's one of the few doctors who has the knowledge, wisdom, and courage uh, to challenge the unethical use of uh, drugs. He's a big proponent of our ancient uh, medicine, uh, Indian ancient medicine, and brings it in a very modern scientific way for the knowledge and benefit of all of us. And I truly believe that he can be a beacon of light to guide the minds of young doctors all over the world. Thank uh, you. Dr. Hegde did his medical training in India, went on to do his further uh, training in medicine, did his FRCP from UK, Ireland, and FRCC from USA. He was vice chancellor of Manipal Academy of, of Higher Education. He was the first Indian teacher uh, to be invited as examiner at Royal Colleges, both in Ireland as well as in the United Kingdom. United Kingdom. Sorry. He is very well published. He has numerous articles in a number of journals all over the world. Uh, he has written 35 books, uh, which are always in demand and mostly out of print because of that reason. Uh, one of my favorite books uh, written by Dr. Hegre is What Doctors Do Not Get to Study in Medical School which is a very interesting book and with, with very interesting chapters. Uh, he gets invitations from all over the world uh, to speak uh, as a guest speaker, as well as as a, as a lecturer to deliver his lecture in different parts of the world. Uh, his research organization, World Academy of Authentic Healing Sciences, uh, it involves world-renowned scientists and even Nobel laureates. And it releases a journal, the Journal of the Science of Healing Outcomes. Uh, for his endless work and brilliant career, he was awarded Padma Bhushan, uh, the highest civilian award in India in, in 2010, and also received Dr. B. C. Rai Award, National Award in category of eminent medical teacher. So this is, in very brief, uh, the introduction of uh, Dr. Hegde, and I can go on forever, but we'll run out of time if I mention all his awards and achievements. So, with your permission, sir, I'll uh, begin today's session. Carry on, brother, sir. <clears throat> sir, uh, for the ease of our viewers, I have uh, divided the session into three sections. We'll we'll talk about uh, the general, in general, the pandemic of uh, COVID-19, and the second part we will go into the the clinical implications and treatment and management options available, and in the third part we'll talk about impact of uh, COVID-19 on medical education future. So beginning with the pandemic itself, sir, uh, my first uh, uh, question is that it has been seen that earlier the pandemics used to occur after a decade, but last few years, it has been occurring much more frequently. For example, SARS in 2003, bird flu in 2007, then swine flu 2009, MERS in 2012, Ebola 14, and now SARS-CoV-2 in 2019. What, in your opinion, is the reason that something that was a rare occurrence has started occurring so frequently in current times? No, no, no. See, it's a question of uh, looking for it. Sir. These viruses have been there ever since uh, time immemorial. They have not come recently. Right. These viruses have been there. They are named differently at different times. And uh, when you go, go look for it, suppose you go on checking everybody for the virus, you will probably find more patients. I see. That's what it is. Okay, it's, a, it's in the eye of the beholder. Okay. Then second part of the question is, sir, we have seen in the current pandemic that in some countries, uh, the, the mortality is much less and even the severe form of disease is much less. India is one example in my belief that things are not as bad as it has been in US or in Spain. And Japan is another example where in spite of the pandemic, the cases have been very limited and severity and mortality is very less. Is there any specific reason for that? 
you are right see the mortality depends on the amount of care that the patient gets yeah. and mortality also depends on the immune system of the patient so the indian uh, ayurveda system for example has been insisting on improving the immune system for resisting diseases not just treating them with drugs and that's was the one of the reasons why india has probably much done much better than others thank you it's it's interesting that you mentioned that because that's what my next question was about uh everybody talks about how to prevent getting exposed to the microbe nobody talks about the ways in which even if you are exposed to microbe what to do so that you don't get the severe form of disease or at least not not the complications of disease and self immunity is something which has been mentioned in ayurveda a lot but somehow in modern discussions you don't hear enough of it uh, so can you no that's our mistake yes sir that's our mistake because the most important thing about disease is as i said disease is directly proportional to the virulence of the cause but inversely proportional to the resistance of the host host resistance is the most important thing and host resistance is something that is built by our systems yes sir most of this motor infectious disease uh, sir uh, if i am not wrong is based on the germ theory given by loose pasteur but many few very few people know that in his death bed loose pasteur himself debunked the germ theory and he said the host factors are the more important factors in the occurrence of a disease and i think self immunity fits oh, most in important factor that is the factor that decides the future of the man or the disease then sir carrying on the discussion what in your opinion are the things specifically that one can do to improve self immunity especially in the a, pandemic good you know good food fruits and vegetables in plenty okay. not much of wheat because meat eating is not a thing which will boost your immunity and the other thing is a daily exercise good enough rest at night good sleep restful sleep and um, that's it been short thank you sir even what little i have uh, read sir these four pillars of uh, self immunity as you have rightly mentioned was sleep uh, diet and mainly whole food plant based diet and uh, yoga and pranayam or any kind of physical activity and uh, a fourth component sir which you have talked a lot because i have listened to many of your talks is a positive mental state that's the most important thing can you please you know the mind is mind is the most mind is the boss in everything yes sir this is as a control by mind and if you have a mind which doesn't worry about anything i think it just couldn't care less you are fine if you keep on cribbing about it if you are worried about it you will get the disease so sir then it means that uh, stress could be one of the factors too that makes this yes stress is a very difficult word to understand that's why i don't use the word stress it's a mental thing you know the mind mind's uh, agitation you can call it a stress if you like you if the mind is a uh, mind is tranquil there isn't anything called stress yes, so you make the mind tranquil yes sir thank you you mentioned all negative feel, feelings like you know grief jealousy anger pain yes sir they damage your immune system yes compassion uh, you know you want to help others go out of your way to help others that's really called uh, you know the boost immune boosting system actually you mention a book a lot sir stress without the stress in your talks yeah. i heard <laughs> stress and distress yes stress and distress answer is Hansley yeah he has written a uh, encyclopedia of stress but yes. that is too complicated a book for ordinary reader to read but stress and distress is a simple book which uh, most people can understand benefit from okay uh, sir when we are talking about mental state and positive state of mind and kindness uh, do you see the role of uh, faith and spiritual health in this whole process too sorry the role of the role of spiritual health or faith you know some yeah of course spiritual spiritual health is a lot to do with it spirit is just you know 
spirituality is uh, derived from the word spirit which is just you know to do with uh, you know god and uh, superhuman things something beyond human beings there are some agnostics who don't believe anything about man they think man runs the whole show which is not possible yeah there's something that is running this world call it god if you like call it nature if you like if you don't know like the word god you call it as nature nature does the job so there is another thing that has kind of become a hot topic these days i i want to know your opinion that there is a lot of talk about microbiome and its role in uh, in immunity do you have any thoughts on that microbiome or the gut flora yeah yeah gut wall microbiome is very important because it's the gut that controls the human system and the depending on the germs that you have in your gut your health is maintained so uh, to bring everything together sir i mean uh, self immunity of a person will help him to fight off not just corona but any infection be it virus or or bacteria or any other new virus that comes in the future and if self immunity is better uh, the person is less likely to fall uh, to these infections right sir absolutely that's what i told you directly proportional to the virulence of the cause but inverse the proportion of the resistance to the host and to summarize what you have said the the four pillars of uh, self immunity is good and adequate sleep good quality of sleep a good diet and uh, some kind of physical activity uh, or and a positive mindset these Correct. are the pillars what of which the positive mindset is the first yes okay positive mindset the first and then others yeah. when we talk about physical activity sir what's the role of uh, yoga and pranayam or, or you know right yoga and pranayam are not done for physical activity okay. they are done more for spirituality but physical activity is a daily walk a good daily walk is a good thing for physical activity many people sir when i have this discussion with with people they mention that oh there is lockdown we cannot go out to walk and we we cannot go out to jog so i suggest that you know there is no need to go out you can have physical activity within your you can walk inside your house walking the secret is very simple when you start walking don't stop it for another half an hour that's all oh. whether it's inside your own room when say is there a house in the hall in the house or whichever big room is there it just show up up and down up and down that's what i do many times because i can't go out yes sir i think uh, sir this uh, whenever i hear experts talking about this pandemic most of the time and they are right in doing so but most of the time they mention the complications and how dreadful it is and how bad it is and you should be very scared and i think a, a, listen, a listener who is who does not have a medical background it uh, instills fear in that person and isn't fear having a negative impact on the mental state also 100% yes it's these people who create the problem for for, for patients who frighten people no so sir can you say something to alleviate that and you know what should people Uh, uh, respond Just to when to tell them that if you if your immune system is good you don't have to worry about the virus or the germ germs will come and germs will go thank you sir Let you go on forever uh, sir with that a background let us move to the the second part of the discussion which is uh, management or, or the treatment of uh, this uh, coronavirus uh, covid-19 disease if you will uh we have seen that from time to time they float uh, many treatment options hydroxychloroquine was one of the very popular one then remdesivir we heard which is antiviral drug there is a lot of talk about uh, serum therapy in which we take serum from someone who has had the infection and inoculate into the person antibodies from that you know globulins directly into the system so we keep hearing these treatment options sir but nothing stands out as the treatment and even there has been some controversy for example france has banned hydroxychloroquine so it creates doubt in the minds of people whether it's effective or not 
So, sir, how can what can you tell us about uh, the? the See, there are a lot of things in this treatment options, mainly business. The West wants to or does not want to encourage the uh, the Indian things because they want to create something artificial, a chemical mo molecule which they can manufacture and make tons of money. Oh, supposing they encourage Indian things which are already there, what will they get? Nothing. Oh, that is why they do this. So don't think the treatment options that they talk about and frighten people is the true things. I see. Because hydroxychloroquine has been used forever, sir, as anti-malarial drug for a very, very long yeah. time. Yeah. And people with malaria have had that drug for a long time and nothing has happened to their hearts. Yes, yes. In large doses, it is bad. But in small doses that we give for these things, it's, it's not of any use. So, sir, out of these options, which one is better in your opinion? Out of Zero therapy is the best if you can get it. Recovery patient who is recovered from the thing, his, his serum, if you can get hold of, nothing like that. When they talk about uh, this coronavirus, uh, they talk about all these different parts of the world, they talk about different population. You know, some journals from UK, they talk about hypercoagulability, which leads to formation of thrombus and then leading to complications. Then, of course, there are lung complications, uh, which has pneumonia-like picture or... or, or uniform involvement of both the lungs and so there are such a varied uh, range of complications uh, that that's what i said you know the most important part is the fever if it can be if it goes up very high it can be a problem then the lung complications like you know asthma patient with lung disease or cardiovascular disease has, has got an extra risk okay otherwise nothing to worry about these things Another thing, sir, I'm and uh, I use of ventilators. I have heard very mixed uh, response to use of ventilators. Couple of physicians in US even went on to say that you know ventilators actually is the thing that is causing the complications. Again, that confuses uh, people a lot. So can you please throw some light on that? What is no, your as long as the patient can breathe on his own, ventilators are dangerous to be used. If the patient cannot breathe at all, then of course he has no choice but to depend on the ventilator. Thank you, sir. Sir, you, I know you are a big proponent of uh, Ayurvedic medicine. You know, I mean, uh, you have even a book written, Ancient Wisdom, Science and Health. And uh, actually there's a, there's a chapter in that, Ayurveda, the mother of all medical wisdom. Uh, yeah. So, I know you are very knowledgeable, uh, you know, about, but how come uh, Ayurveda, I, I'm sure Ayurveda has something to offer uh, in this whole, there was a, there was an article uh, by IIT Delhi and a Japanese institute who, who said Ashwagandha was found to be very effective uh, in this. In the wrong misconception of Ayurveda is drugs. Ayurveda doesn't uh, stress on drugs at all. Ayurveda stresses on the immune system. Boosting your immune system, that's all. That's the main thrust in Ayurveda. But these people misinterpret that as some Ayurvedic drugs and herbs and things like that. Yes, that's right. It's not a herbal medicine drug. Ayurveda is a science, as a great science of life. Ayush is life. Veda is knowledge. So it's actually the whole knowledge of life is called Ayurveda. I have seen uh, one thing, sir, whenever we talk, because I have done uh, multiple uh, discussions and, and uh, uh, webinars on this, but I have seen one thing, whenever to a modern medicine doctor, you mention Ayurveda or these things, they, their immediate response is, it's not evidence-based, there are no experimental studies. Uh -huh. which, which personally I don't think is true because I have personally seen some very well designed studies but they fail to or they are not ready to acknowledge it. At the same time... No, as, I, as I told you, they want to run it down, condemn it. That's, a, that's the reason why they are saying doing that. Yes. But Ayurveda has had better con controlled trials than modern medicine. Actually, modern medical control trials are not uh, very reliable. Yes, sir. Actually, I've seen um, uh, these uh, drugs just after one trial, which was sponsored by a pharmaceutical company, and it is released as evidence-based. 
while ever something which has been there for thousands of years right and yeah. has many studies but still they keep asking for evidence so isn't there a bias no, no, no. the very fact that it has survived for so many years shows that patients have survived that so that itself is the best clinical trial that you can get from and uh, this uh, clinical trials of 15 patients 20 patients or 6 months is of no consequence at all and cannot be compared with the long history of survival of patients with ayurveda yes sir over the last so many years thousands of years so sir if i can uh, bring everything that i have learned from you today is that uh, if people follow ayurveda to boost their immunity uh, their uh, not only their risk of getting infection or they might not get it even if they get it it will not be as severe as it would have been otherwise is that a true conclusion sir you know opinion? you are right sir you what have yeah uh, i think uh, the the video has frozen okay it's, it's fine it's okay. now yeah, back back so you have this uh, journal of the science of healing outcomes and uh, I know from your talks multiple times you emphasize on whole body healing. Uh, how does that concept fit in this uh, current pandemic? Very well, it, it fits so well. Nothing, nothing to really say that it doesn't fit. Yeah. Actually, I had the uh, good fortune of uh, having some advice from Professor Rusulay, Professor Rusum Roy of Penn State yes. University, yes. a great Indian who was who has made a name in the West. Yes, sir. And he was the one who picked me up from a meeting in Delhi and said, come, you join me and let's work together. Oh. That's how I, I have come to know him. He's a great man. So can you please, sir, for, for the benefit of viewers, can you please elaborate on the work done by you together with him? Uh, uh, Professor Rusum Roy. Yes, sir. He mainly worked on, uh, he worked on various other things about the human immune system. I see. And he had his own uh, methods of uh, doing the studies. I see. And he was, he was the one who probably propagated Ayurveda in the West. I see. <clears throat> Sir, to the next part of the uh, discussion, how, how do you think uh, this uh, medical education will be affected by the, the current uh, pandemic because definitely things are going to change in the field of uh, medical education. So you have been uh, uh, a professor for a very long time. You have been teaching for a very long time all over the world. So you are very much familiar with the medical education uh, system globally, actually. So how do you think in this pandemic, uh, first of all, do you think it's going to change? And if it does, how do you see it changing? My feeling is, I mean, I, uh, predicting the future is very difficult, yes. but my feeling is it will all die down in a couple of months' time. Oh. Okay. Then you will not hear about the coronavirus at all. So, Another new virus will be named next time. These viruses have in the every winter there are viruses. Actually, if you calculate the number of deaths the flu, ordinary flu virus has done every year, it is phenomenal. Yes. 18 to 18,000 people die of flu every year. Flu virus. Ordinary flu virus. Yes, sir. Which it becomes N1, H1 and various things as yes. time evolves. Yes, sir. So, so then uh, what is the reason? Because I, I completely agree that this is no different from the other uh, uh, respiratory infections that we have had, be it SARS or, or uh, different strains of influenza. Yeah. How come this uh, this uh, became such a fear and created so much uh, havoc in especially US? It's because thanks to the media and the people who are uh, trying to sell it. Oh. It's man-made. What is your uh, opinion, sir, about uh, testing? Because you keep hearing that there should be more tests than there should be more tests than. Not if you do more people. testing, you will detect more people with the disease. That's all. And uh, the sir, I also hear that you know we, we detect more people even if they don't have any symptom. So in natural yeah. course, they'll get better in time. But just by yeah, yeah. 
then we are adding them to the growing list of uh, numbers absolutely yes. the more you test the more number of patients you get because uh, data sir, you you know the data has shown that you know 95% 995% will have not any severe form of disease just no like symptoms at all will we get you you are sick for 7 days you have fever and all that and then you get better with time yeah that's the case right sir absolutely i agree with you Sir, uh, about medical education, uh, there are two parts of medical education. There is uh, basic sciences and there is clinical sciences. Uh, basic sciences, I can see that uh, it's easy. You, you just move from uh, classroom to, to online classes and all. But the clinical sciences, uh, so hospitals have stopped students uh, from coming to, to the wards and all that which is uh, interesting because uh, we have had very bad bacteria and viruses earlier too. Uh, but we were never stopped from uh, going to a hospital. They can still take all the precautions and be in hospital. Even now they're doing that is foolish idea, I feel. Yes, sir. Students must be allowed to go and do what, what they want to do. But they must be told how to, be, uh, how to take care of themselves. Yes, sir, definitely. So with the PPEs and the goggles and gloves, whatever precaution need to be taken. Absolutely, absolutely. Because uh, why I brought that up, sir, is that uh, I don't think any kind of online, uh, no matter how savvy it is, uh, can replace the bedside learning, the ward rounds, the hands-on skills that you learn in a hospital setup. Medicine is learned from the patients only. On the bedside, medicine is not not learned from books. As uh, Osler said, learning medicine from books is like uh, not going to the sea at all. Yes. So, sir, I mean, uh, there are two things that I hear from you. Just to summarize for the benefit of our viewers, first of all, uh, there is a very good chance that in short time period all this thing will die down and things will go back to as they used to be i used to very strongly feel that that's way will we get so so all this uh, planning and talking about doing things drastically different will become irrelevant in 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 some time absolutely absolutely there is a lot of discussions are going on uh, vaccine you know, as if everybody is kind of waiting for vaccine, as if that is going to deliver them from, from this situation. And I have few uh, concerns regarding that. First of all, whether it will be developed or not. Second of all, we have seen that there are different strains in different parts of the world, whether vaccine from one strain will be effective. And isn't there sir, a huge uh, uh, cost thing attached to it? Whosoever makes the vaccine will become like billionaire overnight. Absolutely. And second thing is the drug is that uh, the germ will mutate so fast that the vaccine that you produce today will be outmoded in next few months time. Okay. So virus will have mutated by then. Oh. So this whole hype that has been created around uh, vaccine, I, I think it's overinflated. It's a business hype. Oh, business hype. Vaccine is a big way money, you know. Yes, sir. But drug is given only to patients, but vaccine is given to every human being. No, sir. So if you look at the economics of it, vaccine is a very profitable thing. Okay. But, sir, I mean, uh, linking what we have discussed, if if people follow the our ancient uh, system, uh, which you described uh, in the form of these four pillars. I think in our uh, scriptures it's described as Yukta Ahar Vihar. That's how it has been yeah. in, in our scriptures. If they follow a good lifestyle with proper sleep, proper food, physical activity, positive uh, mindset, whether it's from spiritual practice or just out of uh, kindness to the humanity in general, then that is enough to boost the immune system of an individual and uh, and absolutely right absolutely right and that should be our motto for all times to come irrespective of what germ comes and goes no germ can master the immune system 
Sir, I would like to hear more from you because I have myself uh, uh, heard a lo lot of your talks about the, the RCTs that are being yeah. connected and you talk about uh, that a lot, like how they are. You, can you please throw some more light on that, if you will? Yeah. I have no faith in the RCTs of the West because they are not long enough to really tell you what's happening. Whereas our own experience of patients being treated by drugs over a period of hundreds of years is much better RCT than anything else. Also, sir, we have seen that, you know, the drug was released after RCT only to learn a few years down the road that, oh, by, this was a side effect that we completely missed because it comes after a long uh, years of use and then it was withdrawn from the market. That's a very... Absolutely. The real uh, side, dangerous side effects come on only after it's let loose on the gullible public. When thousands of people use it, then you get the side effects. Yes. Whereas in our system, they have already used it for thousands of years. So that's a better RCT than the other thing. So, sir, then what is the reason? I mean, especially even in India, Ayurveda being uh, so tested and tried and has been proven time again, why why there is so much bias against it? Yeah, I mean... No, because Indians are so much westernized that they want everything from the West. You know, when I when I was talking about coconut oils and it's a good effects for about 30 years ago, people yeah. condemned me. They used to condemn me. Now that the West has said coconut oil is good, they all say, yes, coconut oil is good. They want a certificate from America. Yes. That's very true, sir, because coconut oil recent years have suddenly, everybody you see coconut oil in all the stores. Yeah, yeah. Actually, coconut oil has been, I have been talking about coconut oil 40 years ago because coconut oil has got a monolauric acid and our immune system's fat is also monolauric acid. Yes. So it's monolauriate that um, ultimately helps. And coconut oil is the best oil that you can use for cooking. Oh. And in southern but part... Then, you know, people yes. to condemn it. Yes, sir. Now that America says it's good, they say yes, yes, it's good. <laughs> and in southern part of India, sir, coconut oil has been used traditionally for thousands of years. As, as Ever since I've, been, I've known. Sir, I mean, uh, I, I have very limited knowledge. You can throw some light. What I see from time to time, whatever practices were there in ancient Indian times, it seems like, you know, they are all proven, proving to be, they are the things that were, maybe they tried and tested and knew that this is the best thing for, for humanity. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sir, one more thing about, uh, because you are an expert in this field, uh, it is a, a known fact that uh, patients who have corona and if they have uh, comorbidities uh, like uh, severe diabetes or severe heart disease or chronic lung disease, then the outcomes are much more severe. Uh, Obviously. It's logical. Yes, sir. But then my, my point is that why just corona? Any infection will uh, will be bad for them. It's not just about That's corona. That's exactly what I'm saying. It's not only corona. Any germ that comes under the sun, same thing happens. So in, in that case, sir, if a person had comorbidity and he died because corona, is it uh, right to call it corona death because he would have died with any other complication too? I, would, uh, I wouldn't call it as corona death at all. Yes, sir. So, th because that is also hyping up the numbers of deaths. But I think if you take those right. deaths out because of complication, pure corona related deaths will be much fewer, sir. Very few. Yeah. Actually, that's a that's the one advantage of corona. The death rate is so low yes. that you hardly have any deaths in corona, actually. Per se, corona per se. Yes, sir. But then, as you rightly said, sir, if they don't hype up the, the fear of dying from it, then how will they... Market there. People not, people not follow their advice. Yes. That's why they frighten them. Yes. Uh, again, sir, going back to the same thing. So, if somebody is suffering from these uh, chronic uh, diseases, if somebody has compromised uh, heart function or has a kidney disease or some kind of problem, what kind of advice would you give to these patients 
not medical but otherwise so that uh, they can be protected or at least from this uh, they can avoid the situation of infections you know okay. i used to work in england where during the flu season yes. and i've seen hundreds of patients dying like flies in oh. you know, our cardiac patients dying like flies during the season yes you go to the ward in the morning and come back in the evening you see a lot of people disappear and uh, what you're suggesting when you say preventing is the the usual thing like wearing a mask hand hygiene social same distance. thing same thing usual things that people try to do again sir this is something uh, that's mind boggling to me is that <clears throat> these things have been there social distancing wearing a mask and hand hygiene has been there for thousands of years and but it, it is being projected as something new has come out of nowhere but isn't it no true? no 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 this is this is a old story yes, sir. the old wine in a new bottle that's all <laughs> because because sir, in uh, especially in southern part of india i've seen this tradition to take out shoes outside the house and, and wash hands before yeah, yeah. all before. those actually the methods we followed here are so well good for hygiene Yes, it applies to every disease under the sun, and that is why I say our. I mean, I mean, people think I am uh, being clannish, but I say Indian methods are the best. Yes, sir. you know, you don't shake hands. Shake yes, hand is the worst thing. Yes. You do namaste. Yes. It's very good because you touch your own hands. Yes, and with humility you bend your head forward. Yes, sir. humility is a great virtue. Yeah, very health giving. Yes, sir. And even the hugging system was not there in India. In mean, Western, hugging is very no, common. No, no, no. We never used to hug anybody. Yeah. Hugging That's is a still a, a, a dirty system. Shaking hands itself is dirty. Hugging yes. is very, very bad. Yes, sir. During the last season of uh, flu, I I was in charge. I I had developed some things. You know, when yes. you want to sneeze or cough, you do it on your own axilla. Yes, sir. <laughs> like that. So nobody touches you in the axilla, so it doesn't get. Otherwise, if you do this <coughs> and then shake hands with the other person, he gets your germ. Very true. Very true. So then, sir, I mean, I'm thinking about it. If you are standing at a distance and doing namaste and not, that social distancing automatically, you don't have to. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Okay, sir. <clears throat> Sir, this uh, when we talk about uh, you know this corona or I, I I personally even after uh, now that after I have talked to you I I won't even call it corona I will start calling it any infection I don't think corona is yeah. any different from any other infection so yeah you are infection. right yes yeah uh, there is a lot of uh, talk about you know some people say ginger some people say garlic some there is lot of talk about turmeric. Uh, uh, drinking turmeric in milk what is and your... all indian spices are uh, very good for uh, the immune system okay turmeric is very very good okay. ginger garlic everything is good so sir if, if that's the case there's uh, a, no there's a nice editorial in the bmj during the last cold season flu season yes, sir. they said if you exhausted everything else go and take indian spices Okay. You know, so, we use lot of spices in our cooking. Yes, sir. It's actually good for health. We yes. don't realize that. Yeah, we don't. And sir, I mean, if you come to think of it, couldn't that be one of the factors why it has not reached such severe proportions in India? Because absolutely, these... absolutely. Mainly, yes. That's wonderful, sir. Sir, I mean. Uh, those are the three areas I I wanted to uh, discuss with you, which I have uh, already uh, discussed. Sir, anything else you would like to uh, tell the viewers? In no, I think you 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 covered very widely wide field. Yes, sir. Almost everything that needs to be told you are told. Thank you, sir. So, sir, in in conclusion uh, of this, uh, let me just summarize for the benefit of our viewers. Uh, yeah, please. First of all. Corona is no different from any other infections that we have had or the infection that we are going to have in future. 
Uh, yes, absolutely has, right. Has been a very significant role of media and other uh, uh, organizations in in uh, hyping it up uh, for whatever reasons they have. I get frightened when I look at the television news. Yes, sir. <laughs> and, Although I know what corona is all about. Yes, sir. And since it is just like any other infection, there is no need to be afraid of it. Uh, no. Because fear itself will uh, be one of the one of the factors affecting your immune system. Yeah. Okay. So, and uh, if you follow the ancient uh, lifestyle of getting uh, good duration and good quality of sleep, uh, good food, and uh, some kind of physical activity, if you cannot go out, uh, you can do walk inside your house or whatever physical activity you can do inside the house and try to maintain a positive uh, mental state. And as you mentioned, Absolutely. as you mentioned, sir, so when we say positive mental state, in, in one of your uh, uh, talks that I saw, you, you talk about not being jealous, not being greedy. Not yeah, absolutely. Angry, all these Hostility things. is a risk, a big risk factor. Okay. Wanting to harm others is, is a thing that kills you, not the other person. I see. So, <clears throat> how compassion cures? Yes. Okay. So, being compassionate, being kind, uh, loving, I yeah. think a lot, loving everyone around you, be it your uh, family members or your colleagues at working place, if you yeah. are compassionate and loving to them. I, I remember one of your talks you were giving, you emphasized on that a lot, uh, being compassionate to, to others. Yeah. So, that all these things, if they are done and followed, uh, will have a positive impact on your immune system, which will be Absolutely. a deterrent in getting the infection. You have done a very good summing up. Thank you, sir. And uh, as far as uh, treatment... You're as good as your brother. <laughs> thank, thank you, sir. Thank He's you. a good boy. He was a good boy. <laughs> I have learned from you, sir. Uh, Treatment wise, there are treatment options and uh, you mentioned that if, if one can get and suppose and ends up getting infection with clinical manifestation, uh, serum therapy is one of the good options that you mentioned. However, hydroxychloroquine does have a role in spite of uh, some uh, negative uh, feedback that we are getting, but that might be stemming from reasons other than the treatment yeah. potential of the yeah. drug. And uh, hydroxychloroquine is a drug which has been used for a long time uh, and has been absolutely. Tested. And in low doses, as you mentioned, in low doses, it can be uh, safely used. And uh, you finally, in the area of medical education, sir, you, you mentioned that uh, what you feel is that in a short time period, this will become old story, just like SARS and uh, H1N1 and other infections have become. And uh, Ooh, it should become the old story. Yes, uh, hopefully. Yes, sir. And uh, uh, things need not be, you know, uh, changed that drastically. But if uh, that happens, suppose, God forbid, if this continues, then uh, students should be allowed back in hospital with proper precautions. Uh, Absolutely. Yes, sir. Actually, students should be allowed even now. They can get some immunity. I, I I I completely agree, sir. And this is something that I wanted to hear from you to give uh, yeah. conviction. The students uh, with proper masking and and whatever the preventive measures are, with that they can be allowed back in uh, in the hospital, so that yes. their uh, their bedside uh, teaching and their clinical skills that they learn, as you as you said, you have mentioned, sir, that uh, medicine is learned uh, with the patient bedside. And not from the book. On the bedside. Yes, sir. So that should not be that should not be compromised on. Uh, <clears throat> another, sir, one uh, in the end, uh, after summarizing everything, uh, one thing that you have mentioned, and actually I wanted to hear it from you. This whole uh, evidence-based thing is, is uh, kind of uh, biased. Evidence burdened. It is. Yes, sir. Actually, that they, that reminds me, evidence-based versus evidence burden. Sir, can you please throw some light on that? That is very one of the. I wrote an article about it. Evidence burdened medicine or evidence-based medicine. Can you please, sir? Uh, evidence burdened medicine. 
can you please tell us something about that in very short yeah yes sir because you know evidence based medicine doesn't mean anything unnecessarily we have a lot of evidence which is which is irrelevant yes sir so it's evidence burden medicine so will it be a fair statement to say that we should not just look at a, a, a experimental study done and what was given in that and take it as the evidence and start applying it and ignore completely what has been tried and tested for thousands of years please if you if you see the evidence based medicine studies yes. short studies when they replied on the public the results are totally different yes absolutely on a long term basis <coughs> excuse me thank you sir sir that was uh, everything i had and i would uh, request in the end to give us some concluding wisdom especially for the young doctors young doctors are very stressed sir even the medical students i have seen no no here. you have done a very good job i can't better it <laughs> all that i can tell the young your doctors is not to worry about this this is another disease yes, we sir. have had all kinds of new diseases when we were students also yes, and we learned through it and survived through it so nothing to worry they'll be all right thank you sir welcome sir. yes sir sir thank you very much uh, for your time you were very kind to accept our invitation and uh, i learned so much uh, just like every other time before and i'm sure the viewers and listeners will learn and hopefully this will alleviate some of their uh, fears and concerns actually the pleasure was all mine no <laughs> i enjoyed talking to you thank you sir thank you very you much you are a very good young man thank you sir thank you at sir on behalf of uh, indo caribbean society and texla mekan university i will uh, thank you for your time and uh, hopefully i'll get the pleasure of talking to you again uh, in some time in inshallah yes why not i would love to do that thank you sir thank Tell you so much rahul also that uh, we had a nice chat i will sir i will thank you so much sir thank you welcome good night good night sir.